Campaigns promoting the importance of sexual consent have repeatedly used the phrase consent is hot as an important component of their message. While such campaigns are of course righteous, this slogan is profoundly flawed. The simple facts of the matter is that consent is profoundly important regardless of whether or not someone finds it attractive. By emphasizing the supposed attractiveness of consent, this phrase distracts from the moral importance of consent and makes consent an extension of the very sexual desires that it is supposed to restrain. Consent should not be a part of sexual desire. Consent should be a restraint on sexual desire. This slogan seeks to make consent a component of the very sexual desire that it is supposed to restrain. This is profoundly dangerous. Consent should not be regarded as a component of sexual desire. Consent should be regarded as what it is, a moral imperative. To treat consent as a component of sexual desire undermines its moral importance and distracts from its seriousness. To treat consent as a component of sexual desire betrays a failure to take consent seriously. Consent is not something that enhances sex. Consent is a moral imperative. Consent must be taken extremely seriously, and that means treating it as a moral imperative, not a sexual desire. The phrase consent is hot serves only to distract from the moral imperative of consent by portraying consent as a comparatively less important element of sexual interest. The degree to which consent is attractive is irrelevant. Consent is important for moral reasons. This is all of the justification it requires. Any other attempt at justification will merely distract from the moral imperative and undermine the moral importance of consent. I despise this phrase. It is also the case that consent is not universally viewed as attractive. Some find a lack of consent to be sexually arousing. This is the reality. This phrase embodies wishful thinking. It implies the universality of a claim that is anything but universal. In implying that the sexual appeal of consent helps to justify the value of consent, this claim undermines the importance of consent due to the simple fact that some do not find it attractive. This claim implies that consent is important for a reason that does not apply to everyone. In doing so, it undermines the importance of consent. A claim must be founded on the universal if we want it to be universal. The importance of consent is universal and should therefore be justified on a universal basis. That universal basis is a moral basis not the profoundly subjective basis of sexual desire. This claim implies that an important reason to value consent is for its attractiveness. This inevitably implies that emphasis on consent is in part justified by the fact that it is attractive. As this is not a universal preference, this emphasis inevitably undermines the degree to which people care about consent. This notion transforms consent from a rational moral imperative into a piece of sexual fulfillment. This notion makes consent beholden to the very forces it is intended to restrain. Such a notion lets those who need to be taught the importance of consent the most flow through the gaps. Those who already regard consent as hot are those who least need to be taught about it. Those who do not regard consent as hot are those who most need to be taught about it. This notion speaks to those who it least needs to speak to and ignores those who it should be focusing on the most. 
Consent exists to ensure rationally desirable interaction and prevent rationally detestable interaction, not to enhance one's own sexual pleasures. The principle of consent should not be regarded as an extension of the search for sexual pleasure. The principle of consent should be regarded as what it is, a restriction on the search for sexual pleasure. This massively valuable principle can only do its duty if people understand what it is. Consent is an enormously important and enormously serious subject. We should not undermine that importance and seriousness by treating it as a component of the very sexual desires that it is supposed to restrain. Consent should not be viewed as an element of the very sexual desires that it is supposed to limit. Consent should be viewed as a rational moral necessity, not an extension of the very search for sexual pleasure that it is supposed to restrain.